Hello and welcome to lesson 9 of the basic music theory course. In this lesson we will again be looking at transposition but this time we will be looking at how to write music for transposing instruments. In the last lesson we were looking at moving music into various clefs and transposing music up or down a perfect octave then for convenience moving this transposed music into the treble clef, the bass clef, the alto clef and the tenor clef so we didn't have to use loads of ledger lines and that's actually very handy to know about transposing up and down an octave because there are instruments in the orchestra that don't sound how they are written so for example one of the lowest sounding instruments in the orchestra, the, the double bass it actually sounds an octave lower than how it's written so if you wrote some music for the double bass, when the double bass player performs that music it will actually sound an octave lower than what you've written. So let's look at an example of this. Um, the double bass uses the bass clef, okay, and say the double bass has an A, this A, in its music. So the double bass player will play that note but the A an octave lower is what actually sounds. Okay, so this is the music, this is the note that's written in the music. Okay, but this is the note that actually sounds. And there's a very good reason for following this rule. Um, if we had to write the music exactly how it sounds for the double bass, we would be using ledger lines everywhere. We would have so many notes that would be down here and even lower, you know, using maybe five or six ledger lines. So rather than using all those ledger lines, we just shove all the music up an octave and then it's just accepted amongst all the musicians that even though we're writing the music an octave higher, what actually comes out of that instrument will sound an octave lower. Okay, so all the music will be written up here but it will sound down here okay so we don't have to write it down there it just saves us having to use all those ledger lines and it makes it very awkward for composers to write all those ledger lines and it also makes it very awkward for musicians to read the music as well furthermore one of the highest sounding instruments in the orchestra the piccolo it actually sounds an octave higher than how it's written so if you compose some music and someone played it on the piccolo, it will actually sound an octave higher than what you've written. So let's look at an example of this. Um, let's use the treble clef this time for the piccolo. And say the piccolo has this note in the music, okay, a C. Okay, so the piccolo is going to play that music but the note that will actually sound out of the instrument, the note that you'll actually hear will be an octave higher. So the note that you'll actually hear is going to be the C an octave higher. It's going to be up here. Okay, so that's the C an octave higher. So this is the note that's written on the page, but this is the note that actually sounds out of the instrument. And again, there's a very good reason for this as well. In fact, it's the exact same reason why we did it for the double bass. Um, it just saves us having to use all the ledger lines for all these high notes. Because the piccolo is a very high instrument, the sounds that come out of the piccolo are actually way up here. You know, they're maybe used um, up to three, four, five, six ledger lines. So rather than having to write all those notes with loads of ledger lines and making it difficult for the musicians to compose it and to read it we just put everything an octave lower into the treble clef okay so all the music will be written down here but all the sounds that come out of the piccolo will be up here so that's why in the last lesson we looked at transposing up and down a perfect octave because you are going to need to know how to do this so you can understand exactly what sounds, what notes, instruments like the double bass and the piccolo actually produce when they play and how these sounds and how these notes are different to the music that is written for them. 
Besides the double bass and the piccolo, there are other instruments in the orchestra that also don't sound how they're written. Not only that, for these instruments you don't transpose the written music up or down a perfect octave to find out how they actually sound. For some orchestral instruments you have to transpose their written music down a major second to find how they exactly sound. Uh, these instruments are known as B-flat instruments and include clarinets in B-flat and trumpets in B-flat. So when these instruments play a written C note, for example, they actually sound the B-flat beneath the C. In other words, they sound a major second lower. So we'll just draw that for you to let you see it. So say for the example, um, a clarinet in B-flat has this C in the music. The note that comes out of the clarinet, the note that you'll hear, will actually be the B flat beneath that C. This is what we call in music the concert pitch. Okay, so just like the double bass and the piccolo, the double bass sounds an octave lower than how it's written. That's called its concert pitch, how it sounds. The piccolo sounds an octave higher than how it's written. The concert pitch is the octave higher. And in the B-flat clarinet, if you were to play a C, you actually hear the B-flat beneath that C. And that B-flat is the concert pitch. Okay, that's the, mu that's the music you actually hear. That's the sound you actually hear, as opposed to the music which is actually written down. So for any instruments in B-flat, like clarinets in B-flat, for example, what is written down in front of you in the music, you will have to transpose that music down a major second in order to hear what that instrument will actually sound like. Okay, so that occurs for all instruments in B-flat, and probably the most common are clarinets in B-flat. Okay. So remember, you have to transpose what is written in the music, transpose it down a major second, in order to find its concert pitch, in order to find um, how it sounds. For other orchestral instruments, you have to transpose their written music down a minor third to find how they actually sound. And these instruments are known as A instruments and include clarinets in A and trumpets in A. So clarinets and trumpets seem to be the most common type of transposing instrument we have. You have clarinets in B flat and trumpets in B flat but you also have clarinets in A and trumpets in A. And the clarinets in A and the trumpets in A um, when they play a, a written C note they actually sound the A beneath the C. In other words they sound a minor third lower. So just to show you that, this is the note which would be written in the music, okay? So that's the note that um, the musicians will see written down in front of them. But this is the note that will actually sound, okay? That's the concert pitch. So when they play written C, it will sound the A beneath that. It will sound a minor third beneath that C. Okay, and that's for all instruments in A, and again, probably one of the most common would be the clarinets in A. Okay, so that's for all um, A instruments. Any A, any A instrument, you have to transpose down a minor third to find out exactly how it sounds. And there are even other orchestral instruments. You have to transpose their written music down a perfect fifth to find how they actually sound. Um, these instruments are known as F instruments and probably the most popular of these types of instruments are French horns, okay, or just horns as they're known in the orchestra. And we call them horns in F. So when these instruments play a written C note, they actually sound the F beneath the C. In other words, they sound a perfect fifth lower. So just to show you, if a horn was to play this note, okay, that's the note that the musician will see written in front of them. They play that note, what will actually sound is this note, okay, which is a perfect fifth lower than the C. 
Okay, so that's the concert pitch. That F is the concert pitch. And this occurs usually for the horns. Okay, horns and F. Probably the most common type of transposing instrument that you, ha you will have to transpose down a perfect fifth to hear how its written notes actually sound. So it should be pretty obvious to you now that it's very important that you understand intervals at this point because the rest of this lesson will not make any sense unless you know what a major second is, what a minor third is and what a perfect fifth is. These are the intervals we are going to be using to transpose melodies from now on. So if you don't understand intervals, I suggest that you watch lesson f the Lesson 5 video of the Basic Music Theory course and then come back to this lesson. There's a very good reason why we have transposing instruments. One of the first things um, music students ask me when they're first learning about transposing instruments is, why do we even have them? Why don't we just have instruments that sound exactly how they're written? Just like the piano or the violin, for example. Why don't they just sound exactly how they're written? Well, it's actually to make the life of the musician easier. Um, for example, if you're a clarinet player and you play the B-flat clarinet and you play the A clarinet as well, it would mean you would have to relearn the fingering for every single note It'd be like almost relearning a completely new instrument. Okay, imagine you said to a pianist that all the notes that they have learned on the piano, all those notes are now different. Okay, so we've just changed all the white notes and we've changed all the black notes, and you have to start and relearn every piece that you've ever played. Um, in folk music, we have the similar um, we have a similar problem actually with things like the tin whistle or the Allen pipes. Um, the tin whistle is probably one of the most popular instruments in Irish traditional music. And regardless if you're playing a whistle in D or a whistle in A or a whistle in C or B flat, anyone who plays those whistles will always say that when they hold all six fingers down, that's their D. But when they move to an A whistle, they'll still call all the fingers they're holding down D, even though what's actually coming out of the instrument now is A. Okay, so it just means that those musicians don't have to relearn all the fingering for every single tune that they've learned. It's the same for orchestral instruments in classical music. It means the clarinet player doesn't have to sit down and relearn the fingering for every single piece of music they've ever um, they've ever learned or every piece of music they'll ever play. So it makes life harder for us um, as theorists and as composers because we have to take that into account. We have to do the hard work for them. We have to transpose the, the music that they're playing down a major second so we can know exactly how it sounds or down a minor third to know exactly how it sounds, or in the case of the French horns, down a perfect fifth to know exactly how it sounds. So here we have a melody and the top staff for the clarinet in B flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to transpose this melody down a major second so it will sound at concert pitch. Okay, so the top staff is what the clarinet will play but the bottom staff is how it will sound. The very first thing you need to ask yourself is what key is the original music, the written music that we have in front of us, what key is it in? Because you also need to change the key signature as well. Okay, As you can see it's got one sharp so from knowing your flats and sharp rules from the previous lessons you should know that one sharp means that this piece could be in G major or its relative minor, E minor. I always just stick to the majors when I'm transposing instruments like this. Um, it doesn't make any difference if you're transposing down the minor, but just for the sake of um, convenience, I pretend that I'm in the key of G major here, Okay, even if I'm not. It looks like we are, in fact, because we start off with a big long G in the music. Okay. Um, even though there are a couple of weird accidentals later on. I just put in those accidentals deliberately just to show you what happens when you're trying to transpose accidentals down a major second. So the first thing you need to do is transpose the key. Okay, As you can see we've got one sharp which could signify G major or E minor. I'm just sticking with the majors to make life easy. Okay, So you need to transpose it down a major second. So a major second down from G, 
Okay, you have to know your intervals as well. So that's why transposition is quite hard. So you're transposing down a major second from G. What is the note beneath G, which makes G a major second above it? Okay, it's F. Okay, so F is the note beneath G, and G is a major second above that F. So you're transposing down a major second. You're going from G major to F major. Okay, from one sharp to one flat. The time signature stays exactly the same. Okay, and now you need to transpose each of these notes individually down a major second. So what's a major second beneath G? It's F. Okay, just like we did for the key, G major key, major second beneath it is F major. So for the note, a major second beneath G is F. A major second beneath F sharp. Okay, so remember your key signature. So what's a major second beneath that F sharp? It's going to be E. Then a major second beneath that G is going to be your F again, because we've already seen it. Um, it's the same note as before, so it needs to be the same note as before. Okay, so that's the first three notes. That's the first bar. And again, the next note's going to be the same because it's another G, so we need to transpose that down to F. And the rest will stay where it is. Now, We've come across our first accidental in the music itself, so we have an A sharp. What is a major second beneath A sharp? It's going to be G sharp. Okay. The other way of looking at this is to think, well, in the top part we're in G major. And what is A sharp in relation to G major? It's a raised second, okay? So in G major, A is usually an A natural, okay? But it's been raised to a sharp here. It's A sharp. So if it's a raised second in one key, in the old key, it's got to be a raised second in the new key. The new key is at concert pitch. So it's got to be a raised second in F major. And look to see... Is G sharp the raised second of F major? Yes, it is, because F major just usually has a G in it. Okay, so if it's a raised second in the written music, it's got to be a raised second at concert pitch as well. Okay, it's got to sound a, ra a raised second at concert pitch. Okay, so moving on to the next note. Um, we are now here, this B. So, what's a major second beneath the B? It is going to be an A. Okay, and that's those two done. And then the very last note is a D flat. What's a major second beneath D flat? This is quite a difficult one. You've got to think of what is a major second interval from the bottom note up to that D flat. It's C flat. And again, just to check to make sure what is this D in relation to your key. It's a lowered fifth. Okay, if you count up five from G, G, A, B, C, D, that gets you to D. But D is usually a natural in the key of G major. Okay, but here we've lowered it. Okay, so we've made it a diminished fifth. So if it's a diminished fifth in the the written music, it's also got to be a diminished fifth at concert pitch. So you've got to ask yourself what's a diminished fifth from F in F major? Count up five from F, F, G, A, B, C, and then lower it. Yep. And there we go. Okay, so that is the lowered fifth in this key, just the same as the D flat is the lowered fifth in the old key. So that's basically how we um, transpose and why we transpose a piece of music down a major second.
Okay, so the top line is what a clarinet and B flat would actually have written in front of it, and the bottom staff, the bottom line, is how that would sound a concert pitch. And it's important to note that we also change the key signature. Okay, so it's not like before when you're transposing just individual notes down and up an octave, like we were doing for the double bass and the piccolo. For instruments in B flat and you know instruments in A and instruments in F, for the other transposing instruments we're going to be looking at, you've also got to change the key signature. Okay, so the key signature in the first line um, was in G major. So then you've got to transpose that G major down a major second, and that gets you to F major. Okay, and the way to think of it, I suppose, as well, is look to see. What's a major second up from F? Do it in reverse just to confirm you've done it correctly. What's a major second up from F? It's G. Okay, so that G should be a major second up from that F, and it is. The only way you're going to know this is by knowing your intervals um, back to front. Okay, so you really do need to know the interval lesson. If you don't, um, I'd recommend you go back and look over that first before going any further. As I said, it won't make any sense unless you know everything about intervals. So that's transposing down a major second. So let's try it in reverse. Here we've got a melody at concert pitch already and those are the sounds that we want to hear coming out of the clarinet. So what notes do we have to write on the staff in order for the clarinet to sound this way? Well, we just do the opposite of what we were doing in the previous slide. The previous slide we were transposing down a major second in order to find um, what the clarinet will sound like. This time we transpose up a major second in order to find what notes we have to write for the clarinet. Okay. So everything's in reverse this time. So first thing we do is find what key is the concert pitch music at? It's an E flat major. Okay. And we are looking to transpose that music up a major second. So what's a major second up from E flat? Okay, we're actually going to land on F major. Okay, so a major second up from E flat is F. So our new key is just going to be F major with the one flat. Time signature stays the way it is. And the first note is E flat. Major second up from E flat is going to be F again. Same thing as before, actually. Okay, so what is a major second up from F? That's going to be G. A major second up from D is going to be E. A major second up from G is going to be A. And a major second up from C is going to be D. So that's the first bar. Okay, that's the very first bar. Sorry, it looks just a wee bit messy. So now we hit the weird accidentals, okay? So we've got to think of what's a major second up from ordinary A, okay, from natural A. It's going to be a B, okay? But be careful when you put in a B into the staff music at the bottom here because as you can see from the key signature, we have one flat, which is B flat. So in order for it to be correct, we'd have to make that B a natural, okay? So that B is now a major second up from the A. Um, what about a major second up from D sharp? It's going to be an E sharp. Okay. And the very last one, a major second up from F flat. Okay, that's going to be a G flat. Sorry, I've run out of a bit of room there. 
And just to be absolutely certain, we do the same thing as before. We look to see at the concert pitch music. Let's look to see what is the relationship between these three accidentals, or these three notes with accidentals, and your key. Well, the very first one, A natural, that's a fourth up from E, but it's a raised fourth. Okay? So in E flat major, A is usually flattened, but here you can see it's A natural. So it's a raised fourth. If it's a raised fourth in that key, then in the new key, that note has got to be a raised fourth from F major. And it is. Just count four up from F. F, G, A, B. B is usually flattened, but here we've raised it to a natural. Okay, do the same thing for the second note in the concert pitch. And we can see that it's a D sharp. That is a raised seventh in the key of E flat major. Count up from E till you get to D. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. It's a seventh. D is usually natural in the key of E flat major, but here it's D sharp. So if it's a raised seventh at concert pitch, it's got to be a raised seventh in the written music as well. So is E sharp the raised seventh of F major? It is. So count seven up from F, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. E is normally natural in F major, and we've just raised it to E sharp. Okay, and our very last one is F flat. Okay. So F flat is our very last um, accidental just to check out. So F flat in the key of E flat major. Okay, that's a lowered second. Okay, F is usually uh, F natural in the key of E flat major. So you have to look to see is that G flat a lowered second in the key of F major? It is. Count. Two up from F, F, G, and then C is, is that lowered? It is lowered. We've got a flat in front of it. Okay, so that is the way that we check um, all our accidentals, whether you're going up a major second or going down a major second. Just look to see um, do all those accidentals have the same relationship in both keys? Um, and they do. So you go through them individually and then. Just check to see what is the relationship between each note and the key that it's in. If it's a raised fourth in one key, it's got to be a raised fourth in the next key. If it's a raised seventh in one key, it's got to be a raised seventh in the next key. And if it's a lowered second in one key, it's got to be a lowered second in the other key. Okay, so that's basically transposing up and down a major second. And what we have written here this time is the concert pitch at the top. And we wanted to find out, well, what does the clarinet have to play in order for it to sound those red notes, in order for us to hear those red notes coming out of the instrument? Well, the clarinet has got to play these notes down here. Okay, If it plays those notes in black, then those notes in red is what the instrument will actually sound like, the notes it will actually produce. So let's have a look now this time at... Um, instruments in A. So this time we're going to be transposing up and down a minor third. Okay, so here you can see the music in black for a clarinet in A. That's what the clarinet's going to play, but we want to know what is it actually going to sound like when it plays those notes. So in order for us to know what it sounds like at concert pitch, we have to transpose that music um, down a minor third. Okay, we follow the exact same principles as before. So the very first thing we need to look at is the key signature. So the key signature in the uh, original music there, and the music on top, that is in B flat major with two flats. Okay, and you want to transpose that down 
a minor third. So what is a minor third beneath B flat? It's going to be G major. Okay, so you're moving from two flats to one sharp. And again, the time signature stays where it is. So you can check it the other way around just to make sure. Um, is B flat a minor third above G? Yes, it is. Uh, it's G flat a minor third beneath B flat. Yes, it is. So you can look at it from both perspectives. It may be easier to think of going from G up to B. Okay, that may be an easier way to think about it because when you're measuring intervals, you always measure from the bottom note up. Okay. So you can always check after you think you've got the key, just look back to, to make sure. Is B flat a minor third above G? Yes, it is. So now we can look at the individual notes. So what is a minor third beneath B flat? We've already seen it with the key signatures. A minor third beneath that B flat would be G. And again, what would a minor third beneath that A be? And this is where you've got to be careful. It would be F sharp. Okay, so you don't actually need to put in any accidentals because the key signature will take care of it for you. But yeah, if it wasn't, if that key signature wasn't there, this would be wrong because F to A is a major third. Okay, so you're looking for a minor third. F sharp to A is a minor third. Okay. So that's all you need to do, just to put in that note. Then the next note, what's a minor third beneath that B flat? And it's going to be G. What's a minor third beneath that C? It's going to be A. And now we get to the accidentals. So what's a minor third beneath G sharp? Well, that is going to be E sharp. And what's a minor third beneath F flat? That is going to be D flat. And again, just like before, check to see the relationship between these accidentals and their um, respective keys. Okay, so you're going to check to see what is the relationship between these accidentals and the key of B flat major. Well, the first one there, that G sharp. That's a sixth up from B flat, but in B flat major, G isn't usually sharpened, so that's that's a raised sixth. And now you've got to check to see in your concert pitch section and how the musical actually sound part of it. Is that E sharp a raised sixth up from G? It is, okay, because in the key of G major, E is just usually a natural note. And what we've done here is we've raised it by that by that sharp. Look at the second one, the F flat. What relationship is that to B flat major? It's a lowered fifth. Okay, so in B flat major, F is usually a natural. But what we've done here is we've lowered it by flattening it. And you've got to ask yourself then, well, is that D flat? A lowered fifth in G major and yes it is in the key of G major D is usually just a D natural but what we've done here is we've lowered it by putting a flat in so this time you can see what a clarinet in A or any instrument in A would um, sound like the music on top is the written music and the music underneath the red music um, is it that's the music at concert pitch that will that is how it will actually sound okay so let's look at it the other way again this time we have the concert pitch music in other words we have the music that we want the clarinet in A to sound like so what music do we have to actually write for the clarinet in order that it produces these signs, all this music in red? Well, we do the same thing that we've always done. We first of all establish what key we're in. And as you can see, we've got four sharps, so that signifies E major. And now what you've got to do is you've got to transpose the key signature and all those notes up a minor third. 
okay, so that they will sound a concert pitch when played by instruments in A. Okay, so we have to transpose E major up a minor third. So you should know that if you go up a minor third from E, you're going to hit G. Okay, so put in the key signature of G major, which just has the one sharp. And again, the time signature stays exactly the same. And now you've got to ask yourself, well, what's a minor third up from G sharp? Okay, so this is where it gets complicated when you start having loads of accidentals in your key signature. Okay, when you start having loads of sharps or flats. You have to work out what is a minor third up from G sharp, because that G is sharpened. Okay, so if you go up a minor third from G sharp, you should hit B. So the very first note in the written music will be a B. And then you have to work out what's a minor third up from A. Minor third up from A is going to be C. A minor third up from B is going to be D. And a minor third up from E is going to be G. You should already know that from the key signatures. You're going up a minor third from E major to G major. So if you go up a minor third from the E note, you should hit the G note. Okay, so that's the first bar done. And now we get to the awkward accidentals. Okay, so you've got an F natural this time. What you've actually done here is you've lowered the second note in the key of E major. Okay, so E major usually has an F sharp. You've, we've put in an F natural, so that means that second degree of that scale has been lowered. So the second degree in the scale of G major also has to be lowered. So that's going to be an A flat. So as you can see, sometimes when you're transposing um, up or down a minor third or up or down a major second or a perfect fifth, you're not always going to have the same accidentals from one into the other. You're not going to have a natural becoming a natural here. You can see that this lowered second degree in the key of E major was an F natural, but in the key of G major, it's an A flat. Okay, so that's the first note. Then, as you can see, we have a lowered fourth. Okay, so we've got an A flat now to deal with here. So if the fourth degree of the scale of E major has been lowered, then we need the fourth degree of the scale of G major to be lowered. So that's going to be a C flat. And again, the last um, accidental in this bar, we've got a B sharp. Okay, so B is the fifth degree of the scale of E major, and we've raised it to a B sharp. So we need to raise the fifth degree of the scale of G major, which will be a D sharp. And in this case, you can see that we're moving from a sharp to a sharp. In the previous example, we were moving a flat to a flat, but in this example, the first one, we were moving from a natural to a flat, so it's not always going to be the same. Okay. And that is those three accidentals done. And then for the very last note, we just count a minor third up from E, and again, we're going to hit G. And again, you can always check back over to make sure that you've got the same um, notes that appear more than once. Okay, so here we've got an E, and here we've got an E, and here we've got a G, so we also have to have a G here as well. Okay. What we have here is the music that you want the instrument to produce in red, and the music that it has to play in order to produce that music in black okay so in the music in black is what the instrument plays but the music in red is what the instrument sounds like and now we'll look at transposing um, music up and down a perfect fifth and this works for instruments in F and here we can see 
This is a piece of music written for the horn in F. And now we have to write this music a perfect fifth lower so that it will sound a concert pitch. In other words, we want to write this music a perfect fifth lower in order to figure out what actual music comes out of the horn. Okay, what actual sounds come out of the horn. So the black part is what's written for the horn and now we're going to write what music that actually sounds like, what sounds are actually produced by that music. And again, the very first thing we do is we establish what key are we in for the written music. And four flats signify a flat major. So we have to transpose that down a perfect fifth so we can establish what key the music music actually sounds in. Okay, so that's the music that's the key the music is written in, but what is the key that it sounds in? Okay, so transpose a flat major down a perfect fifth, and we will land on D flat major. Because D is a perfect fifth beneath A, or A is a perfect fifth above D, the other way of looking at it. So that means we have an extra flat to put in, so B, E, A, D. Sorry, it looks a bit messy, and G. Okay, so the time signature obviously stays the same. So now we've got to ask ourselves, um, first note what we have for the written music is a D flat. So what's a perfect fifth beneath D flat? And the perfect fifth beneath D flat is G flat. Okay, so now you've established the first note. And you can go, go back to the way we were doing it before and just follow the same pattern the same rise and fall pattern for the melody of the written music and just apply that to the concert pitch music so we see that in between the first two notes of the written music it moves down a step so the music's got to go down a step here as well in the concert pitch yep so that should be a perfect fifth yep f to c is a perfect fifth and now the melody goes up a fourth so the melody here should go up a fourth. Is B flat a perfect fifth beneath F, or is F a perfect fifth above B flat? It is. Okay, so the first three notes are following the same pattern. And now we come to an accidental again. So um, work out what is that accidental in the key of A flat major. Well, it's an E natural. Okay, so we know it's a fifth degree of the scale of A flat major, but the fifth degree of the scale of A flat major is usually E flat, as the key signature is obviously telling us. So we've taken that fifth degree and we've raised it. Okay, so it's not E flat, it's E natural. So if the fifth degree in the scale of A flat major has been raised, then the fifth degree of the scale of D flat major needs to be raised. So the fifth degree of D flat major is. A, and what we need to do now is raise that A from an A flat to an A natural. And just to check and make sure, is E a perfect fifth above A? It is. And does the same pattern keep on going, falling down a step? Yes, it does, falling down a step. Okay, and now we fall down a fifth here, so we have to fall down a fifth in the written music as well. It takes us down to D. And that's that bar done. Let's fall down a fifth. And then we rise up by a note. So the same thing's got to happen here in the concert pitch music. Go up a note. Yep, that's it. And then for the last bar, we go up two notes and down a fifth. So the same thing has got to happen here in the concert pitch music. So we go up two notes and down to C. And that's the last bar. Yep, and it follows exactly the same pattern. You can also go back over and check are there any repeated notes in the music? Okay. And there, there is one repeated note. We've got a D flat here 
and a D-flat at the beginning. That D-flat was transposed down to a G-flat. So if it's transposed down to a G-flat there, it's also got to be transposed down to a G-flat here, and it is. Okay, so that's transposing uh, an instrument in F, like a horn. You're transposing it down a perfect fifth in order for you to know exactly what the instrument will sound like. So you've got the written music there in black and what the music actually sounds like in red at concert pitch, in other words. And again, this time I've swapped things around. So we've got the music that we want the horn to actually sound like, to actually play. So what music do we have to write for the horn in order for it to produce these notes? Okay, so we just do the opposite of what we were doing before. Um, before we were transposing down a perfect fifth in order to get the concert pitch, but now we're at concert pitch, so we transpose up a perfect fifth to find out what music we actually have to write. And we do the same thing that we did before. We find what key are we in um, at concert pitch, first of all. So we've got two accidentals, we've got two sharps in the key signature, so that signifies D major. And now you've got to transpose that up a perfect fifth in order to find what music you have to actually have to write for the horn. So transpose D major up a perfect fifth and you're going to hit A major. So you're just adding an extra sharp this time to get the key signature of A major. Time signature doesn't change. Okay, so we've gone up a perfect fifth from the key of D major to get the key of A major, and now we go up a perfect fifth from the note of D to find the note of A. So that's your first note transposed up a perfect fifth. And you can do the same thing that we did before, and just uh, the fast way of doing it. Once you're absolutely certain that you've got the first note correct, you apply the same melodic pattern to find out what you have to write. Okay, so it moves up two notes from D to F natural, so you need to move up two notes here as well. You need to ask yourself what is F natural in the key of D major? Well it's a lowered third. D major usually has an F sharp as you can tell by its key signature, but here we've made an F sharp and F natural, so it's a lowered third. So you need a lowered third in your written music too, so C sharp would become C natural. Okay, and it follows the same melodic pattern too. Then it moves up two, so it's going to move up two here as well. That will get us to E. And E is a perfect fifth above the A. It moves up two again, so E will move up to G sharp. So G sharp is a perfect fifth above C sharp. Then it moves down one. So C sharp moves to B, so G sharp moves to F sharp. And F sharp's a perfect fifth above B. So again, you can see that the same melodic pattern is being followed again. And then it jumps down to here, but it jumps down to a flattened note. You've got to ask yourself, what is G flat in the key of D major? Well, G is usually natural in the scale of D major, okay? But here we have flattened it, so we've taken the fourth degree of the scale of D major and flattened it. So we need to take the fourth degree of the scale of A major and flatten it as well. So that means that we're going to have a D flat, okay? And D flat is a perfect fifth above G flat and follows the same shape of melody. And now it moves up one, but it moves up to a sharpened note. So A sharp is the sharpened fifth degree in the scale of D major, so we need the sharpened fifth degree in the scale of A major, which is going to be E sharp. And E sharp is a perfect fifth above A sharp. And again, it follows the same melodic pattern. Okay, so that's transposing a melody up a perfect fifth in order to figure out what music do we have to write for an instrument in F to produce 
those signs in red. Okay. So I hope that's given you some idea of how to transpose um, music up and down a major second, up and down a minor third, and up or down a perfect fifth, in order for us to find out what do these transposing instruments like clarinets, trumpets, and horns, what music do we have to write for them to produce certain sounds, or the other way around, um, when they play what's written in front of them, what sounds do these instruments create. And again, if you have any trouble with any of this, you can always contact me um, through the website. Uh, the contact page is in the About Me section on the website. So I hope that's given you um, some help with transposing instruments.